Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. Visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So today we are going to wrap up the, the video series on the steels that, uh, that I like to use. <clears throat> what I think they're good for, why I use them the way, it, or why I use them. Why it comes up, he needs, uh, needs some little bit of attention here. Um, let's see, the first one I did was 440C stainless steel. Second one was uh, 1095 high carbon steel. Then it was 5160 spring steel. And then it was 52100 high carbon steel. Um, and then it was uh, 1095 or 1084 and 15 and 20 uh, for pattern welded steels. And then this one, the last one, is going to be miscellaneous, okay? So I make 99% of my knives out of the other steels, okay? I probably make, well, I don't know, I'd actually have to write down on a piece of paper, you know, to add up all the, um, you know, the percentages of the knives that I make. I'd say I probably make the most out of 1095. Um, follow that by 440C stainless. And then after that would be... Lately here would be 52100 um, and then 5160, either miscellaneous or 5160, one of the two. <clears throat> the miscellaneous ones that we're going to go through, and these, some of them can be pretty fun, are found steels and what I call memory steels, all right? So like this one right here, I don't have a lot of examples on me right now, but this one right here is one of them. This is a little slip joint that I made from the, uh, the torsion bars underneath the, uh, the first bug that my boy drived, or dro drived, drove. He was 12 years old. I asked him what kind of car he wanted to share with me until he turned, uh, you know, 16 and, you know, could uh, drive his own car on by himself all the time, or 18. <clears throat> I shared cars with the kids from the time that they were 15 until they were time they were 18. The day after they turned 18, I said, hey, I'll share a car with a kid, but I ain't sharing a car with no adult. So, um, you know, the day after they turned 18, I said, hey, you can buy whatever car that we've been driving if, if that's what you want for what I have into it. If you don't want to do that, then you're just going to have to go get your own because I'm not going to share a car with an adult, um, you know, that's not my wife. <clears throat> and it worked out pretty good. Both my daughter and my boy, um, you know, bought their cars uh, from me for what I had into them, which, um, you know, I usually buy pretty cheap cars. Um, and I've seemed to, you know, do pretty good with them. But anyway, so that first bug, um, he was 12, and I asked him, we were, we were talking about cars, and I asked him what kind of car he wanted, and he said an old Volkswagen bug, and I thought, oh, God, are you kidding me? Because that's what I grew up on because they were the cheapest form of transportation that I could possibly find. I remember buying cars for $100 <clears throat> and then fixing them and then driving them for, you know, six months to a year and then selling them for 500 or 1000 whatever I could get out of them, and then buying another one. If it wasn't for the old Volkswagen Bugs, I probably wouldn't have been driving because I couldn't afford anything else. Um, but that's what he said he wanted, and so we found him, a, a, it was a 1969, and... Um, uh, found it from a, um, a tow truck driver down in Fort Collins, if I remember right. And it had been in a real bad front end wreck and it had bent the, the passenger side front uh, of the beam back about 30 degrees. <clears throat> so we got it home, we had to cut the front of the frame off and then weld on, or cut it back to good metal and then weld on a new frame horn and then, you know, find a new beam and then, you know, build it from, from that point on. And I remember when, I when we took that front beam out, I remember seeing those springs in there and thinking, you know, those would make a good pocket knife. But my pocket knife making skills weren't uh, very good at the time. And so they just sat in the, the, the rack for, I don't know, probably another seven, eight years before I saw them again and thought, you know, I'm better at making pocket knives. I'm going to make some of those. So this is made out of the, the steel from underneath my boy's first bug. And so... And I've made probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 of these things somewhere around there. And, you know, they're, they're good pocket knives. I mean, the steel in them is, is really good for what it is. Um, and it's, it's also <clears throat> kind of a cool thing that, you know, we're, uh, we've got pocket knives made from old Volkswagen torsion bars. Um, the, uh, I don't have it. I, I gave it away. But the, um, uh, the wedding knife that I gave to a, a couple of friends of ours in the, um, the, our Volkswagen car club was made, uh, it was a Nakiri, 
and I made it out of the axle shaft of a pre-67, if I remember right, um, some sort of air-cooled Volkswagen, something like that. Ended up forging the knife out and then grinding it, finishing it out, and, and uh, put the different bolster material to match their two cars, and then gave them to it as gave that gave that to them as a wedding gift. So uh, I've also made knives out of leaf springs, out of coil springs, you know, from Buddy's ranches, or um, you know, just all sorts of uh, stuff like that that I call memory knives. <clears throat> now the memory knives, the focus there isn't so much on the performance of the knife. I mean, you have to have a good enough steel to make, you know, a, a usable knife because I'm not going to make a knife out of, a, you know, just mild steel. I mean, it won't, it won't function as a knife. So, but their performance kind of takes a back seat to the, the memory that is involved with the knife. So if you're just doing forging or stock removal, now that means you you know you can make an uh, old files, torsion bars, leaf spring, coil springs, um, you know saw blades, you know all kind of stuff like that. That already is a good high carbon enough steel to make a good knife. If you go with uh, pattern welded steel or Damascus, now that opens up a whole new world, <clears throat> although a very expensive world on you know knives that you can make my buddy ed fowler always said heck i can make a knife out of that barbed wire fence if i want to and you can i mean you can you can take the the steel in a barbed wire fence and you can you can either pattern weld that you know with some higher carbon steel and then um you know make yourself pattern welded blade or you can pattern weld that barbed wire together with another steel and then use that to uh, do a sand mine to where you have a good cutting steel and then put that barbed wire steel mix on either side of it and forge weld it and make a sand mine blade like that. Or you can do like a can Damascus where you take a can, <coughs> a metal can, um, you know, like a section of two by two, um, weld a, uh, an end on one of them and fill, put your, your found steel, whatever it is that you want, whether it's chunks of a barbed wire or fishing hooks or ball bearings or you know lock washers, pretty much whatever you want. You put that in there and then you fill up the space with, with powdered 1084 powdered steel that you get from the knife suppliers. You fill it up, you weld another uh, plate on the top and then you stick the whole dang thing into the forge, bring the whole thing up to forge welding temperature, let it soak for a little bit, make sure that heat gets all the way through, and then go ahead and press it or put it underneath the power hammer and start forge welding it together. Once the whole thing is forged to a certain point, then you cut the can off and then bam, you have steel now that you made from a barbed wire fence. Or you can go all the way and, you know, put that, you know, your whatever steel you're in into a crucible and bring it up to uh, a casting temperature where that steel becomes completely molten. And then, um, you know, let it cool and then dump the thing out and then, you know, pour it out either way and then take that and then forge it into your blade. So when you're doing memory knives, I know a, a, a buddy of mine, really good friend, we're waiting for him to, to have some more free time. He's got some of his mother's ashes that we're going to turn into a, a bar of steel, probably uh, with the can method, and then forge it out and make a couple of pocket knives. Um, and that will, be, that will be a pretty cool uh, set of pocket knives, I think. Um, so with memory steels, you're you're pretty much limited to, you know, either the amount of time you want to put into it or the time of money that you want to put into it because you can make all kind of stuff for memory knives. And those, those are a really fun class of knives to make when somebody comes up and says, hey, I got this old file, you know, off the family ranch and then, you know, I got some other relative's old t-shirt and then, you know, I've got some dog hair here. Can you take all that and make a knife out of it? And you, you absolutely can and it's an awful lot of fun. Some of the <coughs> regular steels um, that I've made, you know, just a couple of them here or there. I've got a big old bar of W1 
um, that they gave me on the when I did the forged and fire thing. That was what they wanted me to make the sword out of. They can they said you can make your sword out of this W1 or you know whatever else you want to use. I was like, well, a sword on national television, I think I'm going to make that out of 5160 because I know it. I'm not going to, you know, use a new steel that I've never worked with before. So I used 5160 for that sword and then I kept that bar of W1. And I made some straight razors out of it. You know, I think that's all I've made out of it is some straight razors. And it works really good for a straight razor. Um, but when it, when it, um, you know, when that bar of steel is done, I'm probably not going to buy any more of it because W1 and 1095, good 1095, are very, very similar. And I already stock 1095 and I already work with it an awful lot. <clears throat> so kind of to wrap up the whole series, those are the steels that I like to work in. Um, and the reasons why I like to work in them. Um, are they the, the, the absolute pinnacle best steels out there? Maybe, maybe so, maybe, maybe not. I'm not too sure that that's something that I'm after. Like I said, most of the time when I'm making a knife, knife, straight razor, pocket knife, kitchen knife, whatever, I'm not really after the best in any one thing, okay? I'm after the, the whole package. I want a nice balanced um, steel geometry, and um, heat treat, you know, to give you a good balanced knife, you know, a knife that uh, has a, you know, good edge retention to great edge retention, a reasonable, or I should say reasonable edge retention, reasonable toughness, reasonable flexibility, reasonable, reasonable geometry, and reasonable uh, maintenance requirements. <clears throat> as well as reasonable costs if that you know if I can get that in there all at the same time so you know I'm not a big steel chaser I don't chase the steel of the month you know my steels are the the steels that I have the steels that I use and I'd I'd much rather focus on just a handful of, a small handful of steels and try to get the most out of those steels versus chasing the steel of the month and not really ever getting everything that that particular steel has to offer because I haven't worked in it enough. So, I don't know, that's kind of my philosophy when it comes to knife making and steel selection, um, you know, and um, well, it just kind of is what it is. Um, I don't know, maybe in another five or 10 years, I'll taste the steels of the month, but I kind of doubt it. Um, I'm pretty set in the steels that I use. Now, I, I probably will add some steels you know, to my lineup, you know, as years go by. Um, and I don't know, I might even drop one or two, you know, you never know. Um, but like I said, I think the, the, the greatest performance and the greatest value that you get from a, uh, from a knife maker is that knife maker's experience with that particular steel. And I just don't think you can get that from a guy that works in 20 or 30 steels or whatever, you know, the new, newest steel that hits the market is. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. Visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.